The fourth vision concerning the trial and tribulation that are to come upon men. Twenty days after the former vision, I saw another vision, brethren, a representation of the tribulation that is to come. I was going to a country house along the companion road. Now the house lay about ten furlongs from the public road. The district is one rarely traversed. And as I walked alone, I prayed the Lord to complete the revelations which he had made to me through his holy church, that he might strengthen me and give repentance to all his servants who were going astray, that his great and glorious name may be glorified, because he vouchsafed to show me his marvels. And while I was glorifying him and giving him thanks, a voice, as it were, answered me, Doubt not, Hermas. And I began to think with myself and to say, What reason have I to doubt? I who have been established by the Lord, and who have seen such glorious sights. I advanced a little, brethren, and lo, I see dust rising, even to the heavens. And I began to say to myself, Are cattle approaching and raising the dust? It was about a furlong's distance from me. And lo, I see the dust rising more and more, so that I imagined that it was something sent from God. But the sun now shone out a little, and lo, I see a mighty beast like a whale, and out of its mouth fiery locusts proceeded. But the size of that beast was a hundred feet, and it had a head like an urn. I began to weep and to call on the Lord to rescue me from it. Then I remembered the word which I had heard, Doubt not, O Hermas. Clothed, therefore, my brethren, with faith in the Lord, and remembering the great things which he had taught me, I boldly faced the beast. Now that beast came on with such noise and force that it could itself have destroyed a city. I came near it, and the monstrous beast stretched itself out on the ground and showed nothing but its tongue, and did not stir at all until I had passed by it. Now the beast had four colors on its head, black, then fiery and bloody, then golden, and lastly, white. Chapter 2 Now after I had passed by the wild beast and had moved forward about thirty feet, lo, a virgin meets me, adorned as if she were proceeding from the bridal chamber, clothed entirely in white, and with white sandals, and veiled up to her forehead, and her head was covered by a hood, and she had white hair. I knew from my former visions that this was the church, and I became more joyful. She saluted me and said, Hail, O man. And I returned her salutation and said, Lady, hail. And she answered and said to me, Has nothing crossed your path? I say, I was met by a beast of such a size that it could destroy peoples, but through the power of the Lord and his great mercy I escaped from it. Well did you escape from it, says she, because you cast your care on God and opened your heart to the Lord believing that you can be saved by no other than by his great and glorious name. On this account, the Lord has sent his angel, who has rule over the beasts, and whose name is Thegri, and has shut up its mouth, so that it cannot tear you. You have escaped from great tribulation on account of your faith, and because you did not doubt in the presence of such beast. Go, therefore, and tell the elect of the Lord his mighty deeds, And say to them that this beast is a type of great tribulation that is coming. If then you prepare yourselves and repent with all your heart and turn to the Lord, it will be possible for you to escape it. If your heart be pure and spotless and you spend the rest of the days of your life in serving the Lord blamelessly, cast your cares upon the Lord and he will direct them. Trust the Lord, you who doubt, for he is all-powerful and can turn his anger away from you and send scourges on the doubters. Woe to those who hear these words and despise them. Better were it for them not to have been born. Chapter 3 I asked her about the four colors which the beast had on his head, and she answered and said to me, Again, you are inquisitive in regard to such matters. Yes, lady, said I, make known to me what they are. Listen, said she, the black is the world in which we dwell. But the fiery and bloody points out that the world must perish through blood and fire. But the golden part are you who have escaped from this world. For as gold is tested by fire and thus becomes useful, 
so are you tested who dwell in it. Those, therefore, who continue steadfast and are put through the fire will be purified by means of it. For as gold casts away its dross, so also will you cast away all sadness and straightness and will be made pure so as to fit into the building of the tower. But the white part is the age that is to come, in which the elect of God will dwell, since those elected by God to eternal life will be spotless and pure. Wherefore, cease not speaking these things into the ears of the saints. This, then, is the type of the great tribulation that is to come. If you wish it, it will be nothing. Remember those things which were written down before. And saying this, she departed. But I saw not into what place she retired. There was a noise, however, and I turned around in alarm, thinking that the beast was coming.' 